you. Thank you. Oh. Hello, world. What's up? Welcome to Build. I'm your host, Matt Forte. We are here live at the Build studio in New York City. Uh, season two of Netflix's original series, You, dropped the day after Christmas. And much like season one, as episode 10 rolled around, it left us all with our jaws on the floor. Uh, it is impossible to talk to our next guest without dipping into spoiler territory. So if you have not watched all of You season two yet, turn away. This is your warning, okay? Go finish and then come back. Because uh, joining me here to talk all about it uh, the crazy, talented Victoria Pedretti is here. Make some noise for Victoria. It's great. Uh, thank you so much for being here and hanging out with us. Congratulations on, uh, I mean, just in general, you've had a crazy couple of years. You've been <laughs> in so many amazing things, but you are phenomenal uh, in this show. And you do an incredible job. And I'm super excited to talk to you about it. Uh, thank you. Very welcome. How Hello. are how are you? How are you doing? I'm good. Yeah. I'm pretty good. That's good. Pretty good's good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's it's I mean, <laughs> every day is different. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm 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 good. Yeah. yeah, it's been overwhelming the positive response to the show. It's been. I was going to ask about that, right? Because, um, and we'll talk about kind of how you got involved. But you were a fan of season one as well, right? You were familiar with the show mm -hmm. before. Uh, you became a part of it and became such a big part of it. Uh, so, uh, you know, we'll talk about kind of the baggage of coming into something you're a fan of. But just in general, uh, seeing everyone respond so positively to, to the second season and specifically to your performance, what's that felt like? What's that been like? Surreal, crazy. It's, it's um, when you say, like, the past few years of my life have been like crazy yeah like my life wasn't like this two years ago yeah. it's overwhelming yeah I can imagine it's a lot really fast you said something in the green yeah. room that struck me that I didn't even think to process because I see you you show up you're in a Tarantino film you're in two of the biggest shows on Netflix and I just oh I'm talking to Victoria today and you said in the green room I'm still like not used to being recognized, and it's like kind of starting to happen and stuff. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh my God, that's right. You are, you're in these huge things, mm -hmm. and like that, you're on these global production stuff. So I imagine that's been a lot to navigate. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think some people are just naturally more capable of dealing with those things, and you don't know how you're going to react to that, something like that, because it's so unnatural, and it's so, right. so, it's not an experience that a lot of people have. So um, I wasn't. It wasn't really something I was able to like. I did not grow up around that at all, <laughs> so it's um, it's it's definitely been a bit of an adjustment, and it, I'm I'm definitely experiencing it, and I'm learning what it's like. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's the the smartest thing you do is just try to learn from as much of all of this weirdness as you can. I believe that it is manageable. I mean, I have to believe that it's manageable. <laughs> it has to be, right? yeah, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and it's exciting too because if, if 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 you make what you make for an audience, right. and so it's it means so much for people to connect with it. So it's also representative of exactly the what you want from making something. But for it to be attached to you and y your your face to be not as anonymous as it used to be, like right. it didn't hold as much it didn't hold any meaning to people who didn't know me intimately right or know me as me right. it's it's interesting when my face represents something else to people because obviously people have a real relationship with love and with Nell you know like I, I believe that like I was hoping to have that it's beautiful when people tell me they connect with these characters but like I'm not them yeah. you know like and I haven't met you, <laughs> but I am so excited to be meeting you, you know what I mean? hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you've been um, sort of blessed and cursed with these incredible characters to play, where it's like, it's a blessing, such amazing material to dig into, but it's also the only way people have seen you so far, right? So they yeah. have these expectations in meeting you of, of based on love and based on now and stuff like that, so there is this kind of, this this wall that's still there, that that is kind yeah, of... Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I, I don't know, it's, 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 it's interesting to me because I, um, 
I, I, I wish I could just like, I guess, conjure that up and, and, and interact with people that way. Maybe, because I'd love to give that to people, but that's, that's, that's for like clowns and stuff to do. Like Johnny Depp can go to children's hospitals and like continue to be Jack Sparrow. And that's incredible because that character like lives in him in a different kind of way. Right. But I, I yeah. I can't it's, imagine Nell showing up at a that. children's yeah, hospital yeah, yeah. for anybody. <laughs> I don't think anyone wants that experience. <laughs> Nell needs to stay where Nell is, and Nell's great where she is, and that's perfect for Nell. Nell, yeah, Nell, Nell's life is, <laughs> yeah, is, I'm glad that is uh, fiction. Were you at all, when, so when you came to you, and when the character of love came to you, were you at all hesitant to jump into it? They are different characters. It's two different universes entirely, Nell and, and love. However, I think of it, and maybe I'm wrong, but I, I kind of think of it sort of similar to like when I would get like a Lego set and I'd make something completely different out of the same blocks. Yeah. Where it's like the, the pieces are similar pieces, but it's, yeah. it's two different things. What, what was your process in deciding, oh, I want to do this. I've got to be love. I mean, I was offered the opportunity to continue acting. Like right, I wasn't going to. Number one. <laughs> <laughs> number one, getting to like do what I love is just incredible. Right. And then to hear about this character who like shared all these similarities but seemed to internalize them very differently, it was like that sounds like really interesting like progression for like my work and my learning process, you know, because you're always learning. Every every project has its own challenges, and so you you, you want to expand upon what you're already doing. And I felt like it was going to be an amazing opportunity to do that. And it's it's nice it's it's hard existing in a character that doesn't know how to like stand up for themselves very well. You know, it's it's nice to internalize somebody who is that self possessed and um, yeah does what they want to do. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> how um, how early on or how deep into the process were you made aware? that uh, Love was essentially out Joeing Joe at some point. <laughs> she does not out Joe Joe. She does not out Joe Joe. Right. Joe is on his own thing. <laughs> but she's <laughs> doing a version of the Joe. Yeah, 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 she's killing people. Sure. But um, <laughs> killing people. I, found, I found that out that she was going to kill people and that she had had killed people about like halfway into production. Like exactly how it was gonna go down. Yeah. Yeah. Does that, so you're halfway through, does that at all, I don't know, I don't want to say call into question or make you doubt like the choices you've already made, but when you hear that information, do you go, oh, I wish I knew that sooner so I could have uh, planted some kind of seed or something like that, or no, does it, uh, does it affirm the choices you've made as an actor when you, when you get that kind of a big piece of information halfway through? I mean, you just have to figure out how to incorporate it. So yeah. you, you, you... I didn't, I didn't find it difficult to rationalize. I mean, that's the work. It's all in rationalizing the behavior and finding where it comes from. So I think that it f felt, did not feel entirely incongruous with how she was, the passion with which she moved through life, the amount, the lack of thought that she seemed to put into her behavior a lot of the time. Um, very fierce, very exact in her um, ways. Um, and also a passionate lover and protector. Mm. I, that, that is what motivates the behavior, and that was always there. So it, I think it was less about trying to, in any way, look back at my performance and feel shitty about it because I didn't think <laughs> about it ahead of time, but more so um, looking into the future and s seeing how to perform it in a way that felt truthful to the way in which she had existed throughout the show already. One of the most exciting things about that reveal, I think, is not just, uh, oh, she kills people and she has killed people, but it's mm -hmm. that this person that we've been watching, because it, it kind of reminds us that we've only seen her through Joe's lens, mm -hmm. so we don't even know love. Like, mm -hmm. we only know love as Joe's interpreted her, and now we're finally starting to get, like, glimpses of that, mm -hmm. and, and that was a really exciting moment and a really exciting realization, uh, you know... Have you guys talked at all about, like, just for your own homework, where you would want to, like, who love is? Did we get to see any of the real love? Will we ever get to see more of the real love? Absolutely. I mean, I was never, whether, despite the fact that the audience is steered to, towards Joe's perspective because we have the voiceover, it, it, I'm, as an actor, performing love, never doing anything but being entirely who she is. So I don't think that we haven't, 
seen love. She was always there. She, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think there's anything missing. I think she really lays it all out. <laughs> Did, um, you know, Penn's going to come later this, uh, next week or this week. He's, he's on the schedule. He's going to come by as well. And I'm curious about any conversations that you guys had and sort of discussing, uh, you know, comparing and contrasting because they are very different people. I know I glossed yeah. over that and I say you out, Joe, Joe, it's more complex yeah. than that, but I'm, I'm curious what kind of discussions you guys dug into and mm -hmm. sort of speaking about the mental gymnastics they both do in rationalizing their actions and mm -hmm. where they overlap and where they don't. You guys discuss that at all? And what was that like? I mean, I, we definitely talked about the show a lot and what, we're representing through um th through through the work that we're doing um the the relation kind of relationship they have and whatnot but i think we both work pretty instinctually and i think that um we didn't we we know that the characters aren't the, the things that they do are not um good <laughs> they're not they're not they're not safe behavior they're not like G yeah, good behavior, but it is things that we are all capable of, you know? And so it is within our, it, we have the capacity to understand it and to perform that. Um, we, me and Penn, as far as I know, have not actually done the, like, k killed people. <laughs> You're just leaving the door open just in case. <laughs> it's, it's highly unlikely. Well, the show also shows you that you don't know what's going on in people's lives. Yeah, so, and I think that that's really an important thing to highlight <laughs> <laughs> from the show that I think is really, really valuable and something that I think you love encompasses. We think she encompasses and, and she does in a lot of ways and, and being sensitive and compassionate to other people without having to be told the entire story. The fact that she chooses to. Um, open Joe up instead of taking all of his harshness and avoidance um, as personal. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, yeah, so it's not, the, 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 we, I don't think we had any interest also in judging the characters because right. in trying to value each other's worthiness or um, the legality of what we were doing. Like, th there's just no room for that. I can't think about whether or not it's legal because my character certainly is not thinking about that. Right. She's not concerned with those things. Right. She has the ability to live above the law. Yeah, very interesting. What, in, in general, what was it like coming in to this show, joining this family, joining this cast? Because I believe I read that you, you have watched season one. You were a fan of the show. You were familiar with the show. Uh, yeah. Yeah, right? So, so you know, so you're coming, and you know, Penn, you know what's going on. Was it, what, what was it like sort of acclimating and becoming a part of the family? I, I saw a funny video that Netflix had posted where they jokingly tried to prank you, but it was just like a whole thing they did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was a funny, it was a funny little thing they did. So I'm curious, what was it really like coming in and joining the cast and everybody? I mean, Amber and Penn were the only people who were on the show in the first season. So it, I think it felt like a completely different show to them also. So it, 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 it wasn't really about, I mean, I, there was definitely certain things that me and Penn would talk about in terms of the way in which we're like, um, you know, telling the story, the style, like, like we definitely had conversations where he was acclimating me to the show that were really, really valuable. And I'm so grateful for um, but he parodying that in the Netflix video where he mansplains what the show is to you, <laughs> <laughs> or was that they just wrote that and they gave that to you guys? Here's an afternoon. Let's do this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, he's not mansplaining. He's just being a nice guy. <laughs> yeah. No. No. Not in that circumstance. Then he was mansplaining. Right, but for the bit, for the thing that they had wrote, that was heightened reality. That wasn't real. Because no. the punchline of that is you're only afraid of yourself. It was just like such a weird, dark, dark video. <laughs> I know. <laughs> It was really interesting decisions that they made. But we there. spent a day doing that. <laughs> <laughs> we committed to that weird mm -hmm. concept mm -hmm. for a full day. It was fun. Well, it it's was a bonding fun. experience, if nothing else. Yeah, and it was after we were done shooting the show, oh, so yeah. it was especially nice to be able to like see each other again after rapping, which is always really emotional. So it's, yeah. it, it feels like you're being torn apart, you know, because you are generally, a lot of people are often transplanted to where they work and they're, you know, you might not see those people for a long time or ever again. So it's, 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 uh, yeah, it's, it's one of the realities of the work that is incredible because you have to continuously meet new people and make great friendships and relationships. But sometimes you don't see the people you love or these great people that you've met for a very long time. Talk about compartmentalizing. You gotta like really. 
Um, Don't get me started. <laughs> But it's it's really it's it's really um, it's great to work with such great people. I think that this cast is one of the most like open, compassionate, vulnerable group of people who we 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 just created. I think a really safe environment to do a lot of difficult work. So, hundred percent. Yeah. So that was good because <laughs> otherwise, doing those kinds of things would be just. I think twice as hard. So it, it yeah, it really helps facilitate everything and it, yeah. Silly question, but at the end of the day after you're doing those things and going those places for some you know hours and hours in a day, yeah. when you walk away, how do you leave it there? How do you, how do you decompress from that and leave all the stuff from that on set? In a day? Yeah, like you, mm-hmm. end of the day, you've been spending the whole day uh, at this heightened level and, and going to these deep, dark places, and now you get to just be Victoria. You get to walk a, you have a trailer or a hotel room, whatever it is that you go back to. How do you leave that behind and turn all that off? They don't let you sleep in the trailer. No? It would be convenient. It, it would be convenient if they let you sleep in the trailer sometimes. Because <laughs> then you could just wake up and be at work. <laughs> That's the dream. Yeah. But, <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, when I go back home, I, um, I, I tidy up a lot. Okay. Like, I, try to, I just try to recenter myself. Mm. I, I smoke weed. Nice. I <laughs> let's get rid of the taboo. Yeah. It's healthy. It's medicine. Um, and uh, I listen to music. Yeah, I just try to, you know, come you- back to try to calm down because I get really hyped up and focused on my work. So it takes a bit to, I think, to just, just try to stop thinking about work. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Uh, what do you? When, what's your go-to uh, record? Or when you're do, doing music? When you're listening to music? When you're doing music? What am I? An alien? How, who says that? When you're listening do to human mu- music? <laughs> when you, yeah. <laughs> when you're listening to music. Uh, do you have like a go-to playlist or artist or you know? I, I imagine that changes and fluctuates depending on the. Yeah, time, I listen right? to a lot of different things. Yeah. But when context, do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> hardest day. Oh uh, man, you're you're near tears. A really hard near, day. Yeah, and I need something to. Br- I gotta come back to reality here. And bring New FK Twigs album okay. is like an adventure in itself. So I feel like I just said this in another interview, but I'm, I can hype up FK Twigs all day. Um, yeah, I think it really um, it, it was really amazing, and it, I think it takes me out of my head because it, it really tells a story. So it's like watching it, it's it's a form of escapism in the same way like watching a television show or a movie can be. Mm-hmm. We're um we're gonna go over to audience questions in a second. We'll take a couple from Twitter, but mm-hmm. I wanted to ask before we do that, before we wrap up, uh, you're also you're working on the the anthology series, the next haunting series, which is oh yeah. got some fans here. Yay! I don't know if there's anything you can tell us about that yet, or 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 share anything with it. But uh, one, congratulations, and two, uh, is, is there anything you can share about the the, the new project? I'm blonde now. Okay, that's fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's scary. Yeah, okay. That's kind of what I figured I'd get. You know, I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't ask. No, I it's no fun if you know, too. I don't, well, I don't want spoilers, yeah. obviously. It's um, beautiful. But it's, it's, uh, a, a, it's a lot of hard work. The, the, a lot of the cast members are new, and they're incredible. Yeah. And it's... It's nice being able to do it pended for me and kind of invite all these great people, you know, that we're so lucky to have uh, into the show. Did they, um, did they, did you like get a phone call like, hey, we want to bring you back. We want to do more of these with you. Or were you like, I love doing that. If there's any way we can get me on it. Like, how, how did it work? Did you get the news? Hey, you're doing another one. Did you audition? I don't know. You don't know if you can share that? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. But it was really, I, I. Yeah, I felt really lucky. Yeah. I've never talked about this or, like, talked about right. whether or not I can talk about it. Then we're just going to keep moving. How about okay. that? <laughs> yeah. I ain't looking to get you in trouble. Thank uh, you. No, of course not. <laughs> uh, well, we're all really, obviously, as the woos illustrate, we're all really excited for it and excited to see what you guys yeah, do. Yeah, me too. I'm yeah. heading back there to keep going tonight. 
Oh, really? Tonight? Literally tonight going back wow. to Vancouver. No way. And uh, we keep on keeping on and yeah. What an awesome problem to have. It's, like, it's, seriously. Like, you know to I mean? go back to do what I love. Yeah, exactly. I saying, know. Like, I have to get on a plane and go work. Like, uh, like. <laughs> I'm amazed. It's yeah. incredible. Like to, to have that opportunity to, to see a new city, to work with amazing people and to, to tell this story that I'm, I'm really excited about people seeing. Yeah. yeah. Oof, I wish I could share things. Hey, I really, you know I what? Really Who do. Do? When you can, come back. I'm excited. All right? Yeah. So promise that. You come back, you share it when you can. Okay. Uh, in the meantime, <laughs> just keep doing what you're doing, man. Just keep crushing it. Uh, you are incredible at telling stories, and you've given us some amazing characters already, so I'm really excited to see what happens next. Thank you. Uh, thank you, and thank congratulations you. on uh, an amazing season of television. Yeah. I'm here. sorry if I got too serious about diminishing the taboo about, about weed. No, that's but... all right. People smoke weed, man. You're in New York. Some of these people are high right now. Yeah. <laughs> what are you worried about? Yeah. Do you see yeah. my crew? Did you, I'm kidding, guys. What? <laughs> Utmost professional, except for Kate. I, uh... <laughs> 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 uh, I'm kidding. All right. Anyway, the, you're amazing. Let's go ahead. Let's get some questions from the uh, the outer world here. The first one is from the, the Jarek Bruhl. All right. What's up? What kind of research did you do to prepare yourself to become Love Quinn? What kind of research? Um, I mean, uh, you read the script. I I I learned. Uh, I did some work on co cooking. I do love to cook. Um, already, so I was very excited about trying to expand my skill set. <laughs> um, you know, it always feels so good when you can like really. Chop really fast. <laughs> it's very uh, gratifying. Yeah, it is. Um, so I did a lot of that. Um, and kind of learning about the world in which love comes from. Yeah. Um, but also not trying to allow that to define her. Because obviously we all grow up however we grow up. But that is not who we are. <laughs> so there's, it was also just really digging into the scripts and trying to see what, um, what, what the, what the key components of this person are. Um, and, you know, sometimes utilizing music or imagery to try to just create a more tangible idea of what I do, which is kind of woo woo and like, <laughs> Uh, a bit, a bit, yeah. So that there's something to come back to because it can become like kind of, yeah, spiritual and, um, yeah, fleeting. Can I ask you a silly cooking follow up question? Yes. Do you have like a fun little kitchen gadget that perhaps you like that you use when you cook? Um, I remember I begged my parents to give me a mandolin. Nice. <laughs> dangerous, but very effective. Very dangerous. Oh, no, did you ever cut yourself on it? Yes, of course. <laughs> I, I I often find my I hurt myself a lot. Yeah, oh. I'm a klutz. <laughs> I always ask in hopes of discovery of a new fun little gadget. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's a good one. My my mom got me a vajetti. Oh, those are great. Which sounds a little, but yes. it's 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 making spaghetti out of vegetables. They know what they did with that name. They I, know. I, you would think I don't know though. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah. I have uh, <laughs> this crazy little contraption. It's like this big, and you put garlic in it, and it's got two wheels on it, and then mm -hmm. blades inside, and then you roll it on the counter, and it dices the garlic up in like two seconds. Oh, nice. I know. My mom used to have this weird, I think it was like a latex tube, and you would just crush the garlic, and then you would roll it in it. And yeah. then the garlic clove would... That's a fun yeah. one, too. Yeah. It was convenient. <laughs> Thank you for going down that weird avenue with me. I've got two in the room. For sure. You've got microphones. First one, go for it. Right Hi, here. Hi, Victoria. Hi. Uh, what was your initial reaction when you first found out Love was a killer herself? Oh. Um, I was really... Uh, disappointed in her. <laughs> but, you know... Then I had to let that go. <laughs> you know, you want to, you like when you really believe in a character, you want them to do good into the world. But as we all know, we don't always do that. Sometimes we do bad things and we hurt people. Um, but yeah, no, it, it was like, oh man, you know? Also, like them, like him just like completely rejecting her, it was like, oh man. But then you have to let it go because you're like, I have to do it now. So then it was just about rising to the challenge and 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 
getting it done and, and, and making sure it felt real. Yeah. The projection is so tragic because in a lot of ways, he, he works so hard to make her perfect. Yeah. Like, dude, you guys are deadly dangerous and illegal, but a pretty good match. Like, mm-hmm. you don't need to make her perfect. And then, like, when she finally opens up and he just, like, mm. sees no, two he can't. And, yeah. What he wants is not real or accomplishable. No, one person cannot be all things. It's, yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your question. That was awesome. Can I, do, I want to do one more. Let's Thank you. It. Come on down. Hi, Victoria. Um, so my question is, how do you um, prepare uh, for your role in um, The Haunting of Hill House where you're traumatized about the bent neck lady mm-hmm. compared to Love Quinn, who um, is the main romantic interest who would do anything for love? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's completely different, right? Like really different people um, with... Now, it's always about, for me, it's always just about going back to the script. Because if it's not there in the script, it's not meant to be there at all. Like, if it doesn't fit, you know? And so, now, I I was a lot about, I mean, they're both traumatized, right? Like... Like, to say that Nell is traumatized by the, like, by the bent neck lady, it's, that's not how I can see it, you know, because I've never met a ghost. So it's really about, I think, recontextualizing things in a way that you can internalize. And um, I haven't experienced a lot of the things love has either. But that said, I'm an actor. That should not limit me. And so... You 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 just figure it out, but it's it's a lot of work, yeah. but it's rewarding work. I, I like what I do a lot. Yeah. Sorry, I got I, I'm like I'm trying to like I'm going back to like my process with now. I'm already on the process on Bly. It's yeah. weird to talk about you sometimes. Yeah. You in the show. <laughs> and you specifically as a person. <laughs> um. I bet. It's a weird show name. It's hard to talk about. <laughs> Thank you so much for your Thank question, you. man. Um, Thank you. You know, as different as it was and as different as the process was, were there was there anything, like, that you specifically had in your tool set now because you had done now? Like, that you were like, okay, I know this is a different world, but I... Oh, I yeah, you pre- packed that stuff in. I mean, Nell was my first job on camera. Oh, shit, right. N- yeah, The Haunting of Hill House was my first professional job as an actor. So that was often... I'm answering your question more, (laughs) because I'm figuring it out, (laughs) Um, was a lot about, you know, trying to get the performance there, but also learning about where to take my mark, how to conserve my energy over working so many hours in a day, Um, figuring out how to cry over and over and over again, like, that's challenging. <laughs> it's really, you can't, like, manufacture it. I don't know. And, but I, I felt myself, this is silly. I, I, I don't know if you want to know these things. But, like, I felt myself while I was doing haunting, like, slowly getting better at mustering up certain qualities or emotions um, as I was going. Like, I, I really saw my muscle, like, getting stronger. And it's weird, because there's not an acting muscle. <laughs> like, acting is a combination of speaking and moving around. So, but, like, what's, what's the other thing? You know, we all speak and move around, but we're not all acting all the time. That's when I'm saying there's something spiritual about it. It's that thing. So, um so yeah, I, I I think that that was a lot of haunting was just trying to familiarize myself with how to how, what my process is. So it served me in doing you so much, and I'm always doing that. Like I'm I'm trying to work with more ease, and and everything feeds into the next thing, regardless of what the subject matter is or what the character is. Like there is always something to be gained um, if you want to grow, if you want to, uh, yeah, rise to the challenge or whatever, I don't know. Well, <laughs> when you can speak about it, I'm really excited for you to come back and tell us how all of that factored in to doing Haunting of Bly, because that's going to be cool. I'm learning. Yeah. I'm still learning. Yeah, excited. Yeah. Uh, well, we're going to wrap things up. 
Uh, we're done with questions in the room, right, Kate? Yep, all good. Okay, perfect. Uh, just in time. You're awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much for hanging out and sharing everything and opening up and telling us how you do what you do. For sure. Uh, it's very cool to have you here. You guys are a great audience. Thank you for hanging out with us, asking great questions. Yes. Uh, you, it's on Netflix right now. Go finish watching it or watch it again. I don't know. Do whatever you want to do. Uh, this is Victoria Pedretti. You should make some noise. Come on, let's go. Do it up. 